The VolQuest Two Minute Drill is brought to you by Craven Wings. With Rob Lewis, Brent Hubs, VolQuest.com, a little Craven Wings full court press as Tennessee advances into the quarterfinals of the SEC tournament with a 70 to 55 win over Ole Miss. Rob, Rick Barnes wanted his team to play to get more and more comfortable without Zakai Ziegler. What did you learn about Tennessee in this win today in their life without Zakai Ziegler? Well, I mean, I, I think the, where, where I see the difference over is on defense. I mean, they've played two games without him now and a team that, you know, some, can sometimes struggle to score and has scored 70 points in both those games. But um, and, and I don't, Tennessee wasn't bad on defense today. I mean, they held almost to 55 points, but for a for a little while there, it looked like Ole Miss was going to ring them up, but then Tennessee kind of got their legs out from underneath them um, and really locked them down in, in the second half. What was it, 22 points or 20, 24 points in, in the second half? They were, it was a different kind of effort on that end, but I also think it's important, and we'll see as we go on, Ole Miss didn't have a Wendell Green-type guard, and they didn't have a you know six-foot, 165, 170-pound jitterbug that you know, can go end to end in a blur or, you know, get into the creases. I mean, Ole Miss's guards are, you know, 6'4", 6'5", 200 pounds. So I think Tennessee is, without Ziegler, is far better set up to handle those kind of big physical guards than they are the Wendell Greens of the world. Yeah, and and obviously Tennessee did ratchet it up in in the second half. Interesting, Rick Barnes, who is as man-to-man to the core as anybody, found a little zone, and he went to his zone, Robin, and, and it, it threw Ole Miss a curveball. I mean, it was a pretty effective zone for Tennessee. I don't think you're going to live in it, but but how much do you think Rick Barnes will reluctantly play that zone moving forward? I thought it was a nice little read pool. I read, uh, you know, and I know that they don't work on it a lot in practice. It's not like he spends a ton of time on it. Now, maybe he has since Zakai has been out, but I think it's an, against some teams now. I think it's going to be a good workaround for not having Zakai, not having that kind of ball pressure that he brings, because that is such an integral part of everything Tennessee does defensively is the way that Zakai can just get up into the guys. And, you know, even if he's jamming them, you know, keep him from getting around it because of his lateral quickness. And I'll be interested to see if that was more than just a, a Thursday wrinkle or, you know, if it's something they go to in a tight spot as we go through the weekend. Yeah, it was. I mean, with that lineup he had on the floor when he when he played it, I mean, it, it it helped neutralize a little bit on the perimeter with some of the lack of quickness that maybe Tennessee has there. The challenge against the Missouri team that shoots the three ball the way they do is can you zone a team like that? For Tennessee, Rob, on the boards, manhandles Ole Miss by a score of thirty or by a total of thirty eight to twenty two. Not surprised though. That's not the most physical Ole Miss team, right? No, and they don't start a guy taller than six eight. And you know, this is the kind of team where Tennessee size with with Adu with Alaka with you know with Euro can, can really wear on a team. And you know, but it wasn't the big guys that really owned the board. I mean, um, Josiah had seven rebounds. Santi had six rebounds. Um, it's it's a little bit of what we've seen. You know, Tennessee doing it by committee, but that was big to to dominate the glass like that because because of the turnovers mainly. Ten, ten, you, it's not often ever that you're going to see a team that has twice as many turnovers as the opponent win the game by 15 points, which is what Tennessee did today with 14 turnovers compared to just seven for Ole Miss. So, you know, owning the glass was a was a big part, you know, of overcome that turnover discrepancy. Yeah, that's where I was going next was the turnovers. Ole Miss doesn't commit a turnover in the first half, seven in the second half, but Ole Miss is in the basketball game because Tennessee gave them bunnies. It, it wasn't dead ball turnovers for Tennessee. It was steals in the open court that ended up being layups. How much of that was Zakai Ziegler's absence, or how much of that was just Tennessee being sloppy with the basketball? I think a lot of it was just Tennessee being sloppy with the basketball. Now, I, I, you know, Maybe I'm naive, but I just they didn't have those kind of problems at Auburn against what I would say is a much better you know, defensive team, especially on the perimeter, than what they saw today against against Ole Miss, and that's also you know a road game. So you know maybe it was just, you know postseason jitters playing in you know a different building, kind of a different vibe. But I was I was surprised at the sloppy nature of, of some of those, and like you said, that a lot of those were open floor turnovers that immediately result, resulted in, in transition the other way, where Ole Miss had a seventeen to two edge in fast break points. I mean, just another weird stat that. You know, Tennessee was able to come for able to overcome for a lot of different reasons, rebounding being one and and shooting 48 percent from the floor compared to 37 percent for Ole Miss being another. Julian Phillips, 50 percent from the floor, six rebounds in this game. Awaka, two of two from the floor. The freshman didn't seem to have jitters. The veterans got Tennessee out of the gates early. How much is there a sigh of relief that you just you're settling into tournament play in this tournament now for Tennessee as they get ready for Missouri tomorrow? 
Yeah, I think, you know, I see both sides of it, but, you know, now that we're here, now that Tennessee's played a game, I, because of the Ziegler situation, I think it's the Tennessee's advantage that they did play on Thursday. You know, you know, I might feel differently on Sunday if they happen to Alabama, they're just totally out of gas. But I think it was an event them going to the Missouri game, get this one under their belt to see what it's like, you know, second game without Zakai. <clears throat> and you mentioned the veterans. I, I, that, that to me was maybe my biggest takeaway of the game. Your three senior starters, Santiago, Josiah, Olivia scored 44 to 70 points. Josiah and, and Santiago are your two leading rebounders. And I, I think that's a big deal in March, you know, stating the obvious, but your veterans ha have got to lead the way. And I think that's one of the reasons, you know, I, I don't know about big of a reason. Julian and Tobey pressure at all because they were just you know, compliment complimentary since they were allowed to be complimentary pieces because of the way the seniors played well certainly will be interesting to see how this team plays against missouri a, a tiger team that um, has exceeded everybody's expectations to a degree and a, and a team tennessee would certainly like to get a little revenge on after what happened to them in knoxville on the buzzer beater that's coming up tomorrow we got full coverage of the win tonight previewing the game, tomorrow's game as well as well coverage from nashville as long as the balls are there that's going to do it for this edition of the craven wings full court press he is rob lewis i'm brent hubs have a great evening everybody when you're craven wings it's got to be craven wings online at cravenwings.com